All right. Let's go. This message was brought to you by your hustling godfather. If you're a millennial, you already have a lot of debt, student loans. You got out of college doing one of the worst job markets on record. So you're like treading, you know, you're not really doing anything. You're, you're behind the wealth curve. You don't make as much money as your father did when he was your age. I'm here to tell you this next recession is going to destroy you. It is going to be brutal unless you do this one thing. I know you may not want to start a business, but if you want to recapture, if you want to get ahead, if you want to develop an economic legacy for your family, this is what you got to do. You have no other way. Because we're going to have another recession. It's already in the cards. The yield curve has inverted three times. Everything is slowing down globally. We are moving toward that big recession that's going to take you out, that's going to destroy you. And this is one of the things. See, the way that you guys started out with these jobs is you are, it's going to take you decades, if you're lucky, to recapture those lost earnings. And that is if you get a really good job, stay there and progress and move up. So if you're a millennial, you have no choice but to start a business. You have no, you have no choice, man. This is what you got to do. Because we about to hit crunch time. There's a lot of things that are happening. You're starting to get older. And you're starting to see your parents in this crunch. Where you got your parents are getting older. You may or may not have kids. You're in the middle. You're treading water. And there's so much pressure. There's so much pressure for you to do the right thing. But what is the right thing? The right thing is you need to start a business. I mean, that, 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 that's, that's all you got because if you continue, especially with, <coughs> with the burden of student loans, you guys got screwed. You guys got messed up because you have these high student loans that are robbing you from economic independency. You can't even buy a house. You may not even be able to buy a car. So understand the recession is coming. Certain parts of the economy are already in recession mode. It's just a matter of time before the rest of the country is where literally the world feels it. And if you're in a bad situation, you got to start a business. You got to pull your head out of your hind parts and like focus, man. There ain't no way out because, you know, I, like you, was on a similar path many, many years ago. I was poor. They couldn't find a good job. So I had increased my skill sets. And this is why I'm telling you that starting a business has allowed me to not only catch up, but exceed my peers. And that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to make a lot of money. This is the only thing that's going to get you there. And get yourself some assets that produce cash. 
I mean, seriously, one to three rental houses is enough to change the financial trajectory of your life. Like you get five, you get 10 rental houses. That is enough to set the economic house correctly and put you in a position to develop wealth. A lot of wealth. Because there, there are many of you who just don't get it. You want to have that good life. You want to chill out. You want to relax. You want to take vacations. You want to hang out with the family. There's a time for that. And there's a time for building. Right now, with this second economic event coming, because the first one was really brutal to you, the second one is going to take you out because... You guys don't have any savings. You have no assets. You have no money in the bank. I mean, I want you to think about it. I want you to think about your situation, your life as it is right now, and to think of another economic tsunami going through your life and what that's going to do. And, you know, we got Trump here who's acting like a stark raving lunatic. He's going to be the first Republican president to have to be primaried in a long time. There's going to be other people running against him. So, you know, there's a time to get real. And these are those times. You can't keep pussyfooting around and hoping and wishing it gets better. Let's see what we got here. Good afternoon, people. Thank you, Trey. What's up, Lamode? Well, that's his plan, Tiger Sharks, because the recession is the end of his re-election bid. I mean, if the economy go tits up, he, is, he will not be re-elected. Perceptions media, this bad boy is coming. There's a lot of articles from Forbes stating you need to start a side business as a millennial. It's in, you have to. You can't like just cruise off one job anymore. You just can't. They, you got to start something. Melvin O, go to Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills and get the book package that I have. It has a garage sale book in it. What's up, Curb Junkie TV? Quentin Jackson. He's trying to be tough on China, but he has no idea what he's doing. Pant C. Martin, I teach options. Classic ride society. Machine shop I work at just shut down my shift because of no work. But I see construction there where I look here in Dallas. You know, like the last recession, they were building houses and their funding got cut off and there was a whole bunch of half-filled housing. Victory, the number one business right now is the concept of going into business. Sounds like the number one economic engine in America called college. Uh, I would disagree with that. There's a lot of things that need to be done. There's a lot of businesses that can be built. I did not see Janet Jackson go to Popeye's. Uh, I don't know about the war. Patrick, I, I try to tell my peers a lot of them aren't serious enough. and They don't want to hear the truth. Well, this is what's going to happen. This time next year, we should be rolling deep in the recession. And they're going to, like, 
they're going to go to their job, and someone's going to like, hey, Bob, Clarice, I want to see you in the conference room. And you're going to walk in that conference room, and they're going to have a pink slip for you in a severance package. And, well, you know, and they're going to have outplacement services for you. That's going to happen. I remember when I first started this channel, I remember there was a lot of hungry, hungry people who got in the storage auction business part time. And I remember a few people who emailed me. I just got laid off today. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, don't be sorry. I'm getting benefits. I'm getting the severance package. Then we'll get unemployment. I already make more money with my storage auction business than I do on my job. So now I can go full time with the storage auction business, make more money and get that other money. And I saw this over and over again. So a lot of you got to get prepared. You got to get started. You got to get in the game, baby, because no one's going to take care of you. Basic income, a uh, universal basic income. All right, they come up with that. It's going to be chump change, man. It, it ain't going to be able to support you. God is no, I was thinking if China's the largest holder of U.S. debt and the economy is messed up, who's going to bail them out? Good question. Mega gardens. LVMCD, if the economy go tits up, he will not be reelected. Uh-uh, they ain't gonna happen. He got people, he got people who are gearing up to run against him. Sitting presidents usually don't have to worry about primaries uh, candidates in their own party. This has gotten bad and it's going to get worse. I know a lot of people like the, you know, the taste of Trump in their mouth, but Trump is not invincible. You know, there's a certain thing. There's universal laws like gravity. Gravity going to catch up with him. I predict if we're in a full blown recession, Donald Trump will not be reelected. It's already I mean, the economy is still halfway decent to most people and the polls state that 68 percent think he's doing a horrible job. Only 30 percent want him reelected. 60 something to 70 percent of voting public who like, oh, we, we want this guy gone. So I don't know about that. Melvin, no hustle equals struggle and mediocrity. Jeffrey, my son is a senior. They're pushing college. My wife is pushing college. I'm praying for a miracle. I want him to get into trade or business. I would push that trade school thing very hard. Green machine, these Chinese terrorists are a joke. They're no joke. Uh, we're, we're the largest customer of Chinese products. They ain't no joke. That's real. And I know China's been in Africa. They're, they're building up the infrastructure and stuff. But Africa is not a consumer market. Let's put it this way. We have one state in the United States of America that consumes more product than the whole continent of Africa. Africa coming online, Africa going to be there, but we're talking decades, man. I'm a millennial, I can say this, that's just not going to destroy. You better get busy, man. You better get busy, busy, busy. WW2 came behind tariffs. Uh, once again, you know, this whole thing with war. 
America has a bad taste in its mouth from war. I don't know about that. Japan holds the most debt now. All right, you boy Rich. Uh, the recession's gonna hit before next November. November. See the yield curve inverted December two thousand eighteen, first time. Yield curve usually has a 17 month um, deal. So we got this whole year, which is 12 months. We got like seven months. So I expect it to hit next summer. Two thousand twenty is fast approaching. Amid Watley, I'm a real estate investor part time, so I'm not worried. Hey, recession or no recession, that rent got to be paid, man. So I feel you because uh, at that point next year, I'll be full, be fully into real estate myself. So I'm doing, you know, I got to start doing my due diligence and start making some connections. No wartime president has lost re-election. Trump needs a war. Yeah, but he got to have a good reason to start one. Uh, do, do your research, man, about that apprenticeship. C. Over, thanks for the $5 super chat. What's the best IT field? Security. IT security. The guys make 200, 300, 400K a year. Quinn Jackson seems like Trump has overestimated U.S. buying power and wants other countries to bow down and play ball his way. Pretty much. Thanks for the $5 super chat, Mayhem Molly. You, you, you do. You need to start now. Reddit go beats. Reddit got beats. The last recession killed millennials. This one would close the casket. I'm, I'm trying to tell y'all. Because there, there's so many folks who want to go on vacation, chill out, hang out with their boys. This ain't the time for that. This is the time to get your ass in gear and start building something. Thanks for the uh, $2 Super Chat, Quinn. Uh, you can go to Google, Amandy Watley. That's funny. I mean, what you got to do is you got to start a business, man. And this is something that I've been preaching because, you know, I'm about to go off into race. If you are a black person and you don't have a six figure job, and when I say six figures, I'm talking about 150 to 250 a year single person income, you need to start a business. You need to get your economics in together because I can tell you what it did for me. I am in a position where I'm saving, like, I've saved almost 30K this month. The day is the 27th. So I will see what the final total is. And because of my high income, this puts me in a position to fund my own real estate deals. I want you to think about that. So you got to get your money up so you can get some dollars to invest. This ain't about balling out going out and buying Lambos and stuff because there's a lot of people who, who are buying Lambos and buying all these cars and, they, and they're not putting any money away 
for investments. They're not saving any money. That's going to catch up with them. That's really going to catch up with them. Uh, see over, yeah, O line business, any kind of business. That Wi Fi bread, man, get that Wi Fi bread. Your board, Birch, what's a good budget for Facebook ads? Three to five thousand per month. Uh, Quentin Jackson, I'm 24, I'm going into insurance sales. My goal is to reach six figures in two years. And save at least fifty percent of my to fund of my income to fund my businesses. That's where it is, because essentially I save more than fifty percent of my income, but my income is so high that I can get away with it, and I can still. I mean, I drive luxury cars. Anything I want, I go out and get. But that is such a small percentage of my income, and that's where I want you guys to be, because see, you making. 500, 600, 700, 800,000, a million dollars a year, and you putting 500K away in savings to 500,000 in investments? Man, 500,000 in investments in three to years is going to be 1.5 million plus. You keep that going on for 10 years, you got yourself 5 million on the top of assets plus appreciation, you would never have to work. You can have that true passive income. Oh man, you definitely gotta learn how to solve some problems. Because once again, you millennials, I know y'all don't like answering the phone. I know y'all don't like talking on the phone. I know you don't like doing business with businesses that don't have websites. You, got, you guys got to get busy. You guys have got to start businesses like yesterday. Because like I said, let me say it again. What you want to do is start you a business, get yourself up to 250K and save half. So that's 125K that you will have for investments. In some real estate markets, that's a house. 120, that's a house that you could write a check, close at the table, and then put yourself a renter in there, increase your income. I mean, you know, millennial peers, this college debt is no joke. I have seen these duplexes in Atlanta. I really need to get the businesses popping. Yeah, uh, Jonathan, he's smoking crack. With the dollar ain't going nowhere no time soon. Solving this system and its flaws is where the wealth is at. Regarding the millennial debt problem, is it cultural issue or the lack of parental teaching? It's all of those things. America has a culture of debt. You get out of high school, you go to college, you sign off for these big loans, you go get a car, you sign up for a loan, you want to do a re re renovation on your house, you go out and get a line of credit. America is not used to doing business on a cash basis. Like your average Japanese citizen has got like two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 saved. And they buy name brand stuff and they buy Louis Vuitton, but they pay cash for it. America's got to get back to using cash. See over, but will online advertising businesses suffer? You know, it depends upon who. Like today, I put up three Facebook ads because I got to test them. And I'm like, you know, it's going to take me two years to really get where I want to be. But I'm starting to learn fast because I deployed some ads the other day and the cost was too high. So I went around, I did some stuff differently and I got an ad that is getting me signups for 17 cents. So that's where I want to be. The businesses that continue to market, continue to innovate and continue to serve the customer very well, 
they'll be fine. But these companies that are not marketing, you know, when the recession happens and they say, hey, we're going to cut the advertising budget, they're in trouble. What do you think about buying properties to rent out on Airbnb? I'm not really there. I haven't done any research on that, so I, I can't give you a good answer on that. Anthony Bolton, I agree the dollar isn't going anywhere. Cryptocurrency, we've added to increase the value of the dollar, not replace it. Richard Brandon, I recently watched a documentary about the Argentina crisis. It's going to be ugly. Argentina and Bosnia. Those are two documentaries you want to check out. Uh, Black Shingo, that's part of the scarcity of cash. Ca cash is not scarce, man. Everybody who's listening here got some cash on them. Cash ain't scarce. Having the amount of cash to deploy to do something to get yourself some assets, that's scarce. And it's a mindset. Then most people my age are just brainwashed with that cuckoo cutter shit or just lazy as hell. Jawan Johnson, you got to explore that. You got to go to the Google machine. You got to do some research. You got to go out and interview some people who own these companies and see if it's for you. Never start a business based upon how much money you can make. Start a business based upon your interest. Because it's going to be hard. And why are you going to go out and create a job that you can eventually end up hating? That makes no sense. Victor, the Great Depression is here. Years are unfolding. Deleveraging. Because, like, you know, once again, let's talk about cryptocurrency. And let's talk about a small business. Let's say your name is John. John. You have a small business that produces 1500 bucks per month. John, you still have your job. So now you have your job income. You have additional income. You went through the money management course, so you know how to set up your five checking accounts. So you, you're actually being able to stack about 18 to 1900 bucks per month. That's life-changing money for John. Let's say John go out and buy some Ripple, get some Bitcoin. There's no monthly income coming in from that, man. It doesn't compare. William, if you can make that float, do it. Exposing the emperor about IT. Thanks to Trump's HB1 policy. More IT jobs available to American IT job seekers. I have more options compared to before. Now it's the best time to make it an IT career and find, and find your business. And fund your business. You know, start a business based upon something that interests you. Because, like today, like, you know, I was doing those Facebook ads. It took like four hours. And, you know... It, it was just, it was a grind, man. But I got to do it. I got to do it. So I put it in my head that I'm going to learn this. I'm going to go through this course. I'm going to keep deploying ads. I'm going to keep testing. Because I got a budget. I mean, I could easily throw 10 to 15, 20K at ads. However, the ads have got to perform. So I spent... So far, 2200 bucks this month, just testing stuff. Because, well, the way that my rule of thumb is, if it ain't really working the first week, I get rid of it and do a new ad. I don't just leave it up hoping and wishing, because, see, if it's not performing in the first few days of the first week, it's not magically going to start performing. So you might as well just cut it, learn your lessons, and move on. Oh, no, the crypto people, they don't come for me like they used to. They've learned their lesson. Bitcoin ain't loyal. Yeah, Bitcoin, big. oh, it crashed again. They've learned their lesson. They don't come for me now. They don't say anything. They be chill. They be chiller than a mofo.
one thing I will say is getting older is a, a skill the, you know, in this ultimate arsenal. You can have your tool belt. And this is something else, too. And this is another reason you need to start a business. Getting older. This is how it typically goes. You make your most income, your highest level incomes in your 40s to 50s. And then around your mid 50s, it starts to drop. You start a business. It don't it don't work like that. You keep pushing your business. You keep doing the right stuff. You make more money a year after year. So you can roll off in the retirement making two or three million a year with your business. You can't do this with a job. You can't keep artificially propping up the economy like a dead body on life support machine. What will a winner of the Monopoly game have to do to survive and keep relevance and support? Once again, it's a recession. It's not a stoppage. There's going to be plenty of opportunities for the people who are dedicated, for the people who are hungry, for the people who are prepared, for the people who have savings. This is why, as a business owner, when it's really flowing, you can't just blow all your money. I mean, if you're a business owner, you're making like 500, 600, 700, 800, a million a year. You need to be saving at least half of that and deploying that capital into investments. Leave a bad ad up and it drains your pockets pretty much. The only thing that may save millennials is the increasing number of bo boomers are not retiring, man. Uh, I read an article of people who were 65, 75, 85 who were climbing into trucks for the first time because they had bills. They're not retiring. They're still competing for these jobs. They, that, not enough of them are going to move out of these jobs for the millennials to move up. What do you mean take advantage of the free stuff? What free stuff are you talking about? Instead of wasting your sexual energy on having babies, use the energy to create a business. You could do both. But I, I do agree there, there needs to be focus on the business. Eighty nine Dr. Funk, I keep telling people, how long do you see the la the recession lasting? Well, once it really, about three or four years. Rolo beats hard work feels much better when you're ahead of the upcoming event as opposed to having to react to energy, to an emergency. And this is true. And this is why a year ago I was putting out all these recession videos to give people plenty of lead time to get their thing started. Because like I said, if you have cash, when most people don't have cash, that puts you in a very powerful position. Because, you know, when I start buying this real estate, here's the, the you know, first of all, I got to start going to these real estate investor meetings. I got to start networking with people. I got to find some wholesalers because wholesalers automatically come to the table with a discounted property where you can go in with equity. So, you know, I, I want to be at properties that have a value of three fifty to 450000 because I can charge rents of 3000 per month for that. And that's just a whole different customer. I don't want to do hood property. I mean, right now, I can go out and do hood property right now. And I don't want to deal with it because I watched this video. This guy did this, and he said this is the worst thing he ever did. Tiger Sharks, I'm using Trump to make more money. God is no sex. No sex magic is powerful. Transmute that into wealth. I'm 100% in gold and silver mine. A stack in physical silver and it's shining. Okay. 
After the economy had crashed in 2007, 2008, people moaned and complained. Ten years later, did they change their economic habits? Nope. People wait on econo the economics to tank like that and wait on the rapture. Because, I mean, seriously, this one is... Because if you're a millennial, and if you look at the millennial life cycle, you came in with... <clears throat> Solid with student loan debt. Then you had this situation where you went in where, you know, your starting salary wasn't robust. So you, you went into the job market losing money, losing wealth building dollars. That's what happened to a lot of people. Cosmic wisdom. That's what I do. I attend my local RAA meetings to network and get contacts for skilled workers. Lots of wholesalers there to get on mailing lists. No, I don't want any hood estates, man. Owner financing works for me. Moving on to small five and nine apartment next. John Manor. More companies are hiring baby booners because they come to work consistently. They're not trying to take off every football game or party someone is throwing. Uh, my best employees were older workers. Victor, well-raised children have been the retirement policy for millenniums. The more well-trained and wise ones that you have, they will carry your business, theirs, and your legacy. And this is true if you indoctrinate them into the family business. This is how a lot of kids get to farm. You know, granddad, he, he builds the cattle farm. Then he leaves it to his son. Then the son leaves it to his grandchildren. And this is how these people keep getting rich. Yes, I know exercise in the morning because, I mean, essentially what I'm saying, guys, you got to get real about starting this business. Like uh, I've done a lot of videos talking about Wi-Fi bread. Look at what Popeye's did. A depression in two to eight years, 70 million baby boomers retired, taking SS and Medicare, not paying into big taxes. That's interesting. Rael, one of the things you got to do is you got to get busy because, like, I got to start going out and meeting with these people. Are millennials just lazy or misguided? I want to say they're misguided. You got to look at how they were raised, and they, they essentially got screwed from a parenting angle, from a go to college, getting a lot of student loan angle. They got screwed. So I'm not going to say they're lazy. I'm going to say they're very misguided, which is an issue. Because let's see. Let me get into this. All right, there we go. Because the next recession is going to be brutal to millennials and to anyone that's economically compromised. If you got way too much debt, like you, you're, you got a job, you're paying your debt, but you, you got like three, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, $100,000 in consumer debt, credit cards, lines of credit. Then you got a mortgage on top of that. Then you, that that's just too much. <clears throat> I have a fixed upper in the hood and it's being gentrified. Should I sell? Once again, that's the question you got to answer yourself. Uh, Wild Indian, go back and watch the stream, man. People kill me coming in the middle of the stream and want me to update you when you can actually just go back 
You could go to the beginning right now and start watching it. Just your brother. Do you think there's real money to make outside of getting a cut? Start a business, man. I don't have a degree. Oh, man, it's going to get a lot of people. Guess who's you, bro? I worked three jobs at once, slept three, four hours a day. You can't call us lazy. Has anyone noticed that customer service is bad in all sectors? No one wants to do that, man. In my honest opinion, I believe that recession will simply demolish anyone that's not adhering to business principles, single moms, black people, the poor. Like, here's something that's very interesting with single moms who get child support. After child support stops, they usually go into poverty. So they're living a subsidized life. So here's the deal. If you don't want to be like the dude next door, you need to get out of debt. You need to save your money. And you need to get yourself some assets. Zola, I'm going to look at the Airbnb thing once I get some properties. You know, once I get some properties, I'll look at that. Because right now, I don't have the properties and it's too early to forecast. Be real. Millennials are caught up in a trance. The trance says go to college, get a good job. Live below your means, invest in 401k over and over. Entrepreneurs are not stuck in that trap. No, we're not. Anthony Bolton, I agree. Millennials are not lazy. They've just been lied to beside they misled by their parents. We're actually comfortable within this current economy. That's funny. Other than they have a baby like at 45. During the Depression, a lot of upper middle class lost second homes, businesses. They weren't, they, they had too much leverage on it. Yep, single moms going to poverty. Because, I mean, you know, once you get past 200, 300 bucks a month, how much does it take to raise a kid, you know? Uns unseen future. Thanks for the $24. 25 I appreciate that. Would you consider life insurance as an asset? It is an asset. Just because a recession is coming, don't... Oh, women have become way more agreeable, man. Uh, and Sarah, I got a partner made 70 K this year on a Airbnb. Okay. If cryptos collapse, millennials will be screwed. Well, you know, let's, let's talk about it. if you got a piece of property that's free and clear, that doesn't have a mortgage. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to sell unless you just want that big check for some reason. Get that money every month. That's funny. Because what is going on right now is a changing of the economy, a changing of buying habits, like retail malls and stores they're in a recession they've been in a recession for the last two years they keep closing shopping habits have changed and believe it or not everybody isn't going to amazon to buy this stuff 
It's just people's shopping habits have changed. Unsent finisher. Gentrification takes time. You almost have to sell the property and wait until the low income people move out. I'm considering renting it out, but I don't want to deal with any headaches. You can get a property management company to rent it out for you. Terrence Forrest Jr., when getting into wholesaling, it would be best to look for rental properties for residential income instead of flipping them for quick cash. It, it really depends. What about dividend paying stocks? Uh, Garnell, I looked at that. You need like three or four million dollars or five million dollars for a dividend paying stock to get some good dividends, man. So I don't know about that. Ian Smith, you can get a good deal anytime. Once again, you got to be in the markets. You got to be looking. Because, see, trying to time the markets is like trying to time the stock market. Right now, there are deals out there to be had. Right now. And in the recession, there will be better deals and juicier deals. But the thing is, if you go in with a deal, you, you'd be clean. And, you, you know, if you're buying a home with a mortgage, that's a whole different thing. Stack the flipper. The term good job is becoming like an oxymoron. No security, no real growth, no raises. Yeah, you know, it's been I've been in self-employed longer than I ever have a job. So I don't really know what's going on in the job market. Best rental has concrete floor with block walls. It sounds like a prison. The recession will shoot crypto to the moon. I don't know because there are many times that things, when the stock market crashed, crypto should have shot up, but it didn't. I, I think a lot of people are just very, very leery of crypto because, once again, if you got a small business that makes you $1,500, $2,000, $2,500, $3,000 a month. That is better than crypto. You get money every month that you can spend or you can invest. Crypto, you have to buy it. You have to hold on to it. You have to wait until it appreciates. Then once it appreciates, you have to sell it to get that money. It, it's not, it ain't even close to the same Hey, Mac, blue collar jobs, no one wants to do them. I think, you know, if you are broke, a lot of people will do something strange for some change. Because, once again, if you're a millennial, this is your only way out. You know, unless you got a rich Uncle Andy. And rich Uncle Andy likes you so much, he's going to leave you his millions. Yeah, um... Jonathan J, the safe haven won't be crypto. It will be hard assets and people with money in the bank. Exactly. Because one of the things that's going to happen is this recession is going to expose a lot of people. Because right now, there are people who make really good incomes and they're not taking any of that money and they're not investing it. They're not saving it. They're, they're going out buying cars, trips. They're having fun with it. And... I mean, if you've got like an excess three to five thousand dollars a month after you pay all your bills, you should be investing that money as Grant Cardone does. Do something. Do the stupid stuff with passive income. You know, if you're going to get real stupid, do it with passive income. Gold and silver has been. Oh, yeah, they've definitely been rolling. Tiger Shark Studios, you need a business that you cannot work more than eight hours a day. You will burn yourself out. I have more people asking me for jobs than ever. Steve Jameson, they're going to be doing something strange for some change. Supreme and Gucci, David Lee, that's what people are buying. They're wasting their money. When boomers pass, you know, that is if they have life insurance. There's a lot of people who don't have life insurance. 
cosmic wisdom. This recession is going to really see gentrification on another level. A lot of these hoods are going to be in opportunity zones. In these zones, homes are going to be rehabbed and a new demographic will move in. And this is why when you get into real estate, you got to study where you're buying your real estate. Dating won't be as bad. These chicks have become reasonable, man. <clears throat> DJ Slink, what will you do when the dollar loses its value? I don't really see the dollar losing its value anytime soon. What do you see as the lead generation niche in the recession? Every business is going to need leads, man. You got to do some research on that. What is the appropriate age to kick children out the house? You mean, man. <clears throat> Will Melvin, my rich uncle has too many kids to bail me out. Hence the reason they have a service business. Carl Young, a lot of corporations are cooking the books and lying about their accounting. Really? Dividend paying stocks are a waste of time these days unless you have millions. Of, that's what I'm saying. You got to have a lot of that stuff. Oh, I mean, the mall thing isn't working the way it used to. People complaining about these women ain't out here in these streets. These ladies at the all-time cooperative. Yeah, they've been cooperating for about two years. Hey, Mac, I see a lot of fluff jobs will be gone. They're shutting down schools in the hoods around here. I didn't know that. Thanks, David Lee. Steve James, do you think Trump is starting to trade war with China to bring manufacturing back to the U.S. in the long game? It ain't coming back because it'll leave China and it'll go to Vietnam. Or it'll leave China, it will go to another one of these uh, third world countries. The Nubian network is an answer to the black dollar circulation issue. A strong black economy can fly in a recess. Well, you know. Unseen furniture, reducing my full time now to focus on building a permanent independent plan. People have totally forgot about net neutrality. Eric Williams, I'm investing in Houston right now. Everybody working together, Asians, whites, and his Hispanics. Folks, no money's about to get tight. I know, Ben, the bartender, they're super cooperative. I mean, once again, let's take a millennial woman who has, because uh, this is something that I've noticed, you know, for the disruptive man. Most of these chicks have someone that live with them like older kids. A lot of these chicks don't live alone. They got roommates. They got, you know, this one chick I was talking to found out she's renting a room from a dude. And I'm like, that, that's just no good for anything that I want to do because you can't stand on your own. And a lot of them can't. I mean, a lot of them are living with people because they cannot make this any money. Each sense, I think people, military recruitment, you got people who are 35 years old joining the military right now because it's so hard out here. You got people I, I, I wouldn't do it, knowing what I know about the military. There ain't no way I would join the military at 35, 36, 37. I, I mean, to me, the best thing is to go in right out of high school. But uh, military, 
and military is going to skyrocket. People will be looking for jobs. They'll be looking for benefits. They'll be looking for safety. Erica Williams, funny. I know about eight chicks that got married quick in the last two years. Low-income chicks dressing nicer and losing weight. Military recruitment will be back up. Yes, 8 Mac. People are joining the military at 35 right now. Indeed, many individuals of both genders are living in hives. J.D. Garner, do your research for the marketplace. Figure out where you fit in. Like during the Great Recession, it wasn't a recession in Houston because Houston was an energy state. People were doing real estate deals. People were making stuff. You know, while the rest of the country was in recession, Houston was not in a recession. So once again, you got to do your own due diligence. Ben, my homie, had an old house that Chick looked down upon about four years ago. Last year, she was begging him to move in that house. The house was looking like a castle to her broke behind. Sharika Madison, I think it's the other way around. Here in Minnesota, most women have their own. Meanwhile, the men are depending on the others. I, I'm going to disagree with you, Sharika, because I'm out here in the dating scene, and a lot of these chicks are living with folks here in Atlanta. Plenty of chicks out here live with mom, a mom living with them. Are they living with some dude? The NBD, loving the cannabis industry now. Business keeps growing because people need the CBD or the THC with the job stress. So once again, there, there's so many things that are going on because if you want out of the economic matrix, if you want out of the American culture of debt, because you know, uh, I gotta be careful because I'm looking at how to structure my deals and stuff because I will use a little leverage but the first few properties I'm paying cash for because I don't want to be in that position like the economy drops and I can't rent it as fast. And I don't want to have to worry about a mortgage or paying somebody. Sharika Madison, that's crazy. I'm only 30 own house. I, I'm telling you, when I was doing the disruptive mail and I was talking to dudes, I said having your own place was one of the best assets you can have in the current dating market. And a lot of dudes and women are not living by themselves. It's the Waltons out here, pretty much. Good night, John boy. Good night, Grandpa. Good night, Mary Ellen. Good night, Sue. You got two and three generations under one roof. Atlanta is pretty easy. I will have to say that. Bum sickles. Because you got a lot of people out here, man, who, you know, because I'll talk about it on another channel, but these folks cannot live on their own. They can't live on their own. And that's a fundamental problem because that's a discipline problem more than the money problem. Because uh, I was watching American Factory on Netflix last night. Check that out. It's pretty deep of this Chinese company, the Chinese coming over here and buying this American Factory and opening this town back up. Eric Williams, I know a guy with his own place. He's beating the women off at 27 years old. I'm telling you, man, having your own place. The things you could pull off. Social and systematic shaping made these women believe in false masculine like independence that wore out their tenderness, femininity, and beauty. Ooh, that's deep. I remember you said about a year ago, now it's true. Oh, man, this, this is going on.
Royale, many people don't know the real. In the 90s in Atlanta, those chicks were giving it up to get their light bill paid. What saved them was credit, but now that bubble eventually burst. Get your economic for sick mind and get a partner. Pretty much. Females are looking for a sugar daddy, which is true, but there's not a lot of dudes who have the financial wherewithal to break these chicks off. 89 Dr. Funk, I'm 42 when I was 20. I couldn't wait to get my own pad. I hear that, man. Be real, two of my friends are currently upset with me because I told them they never left the nipple. They went from mommy's house to their girlfriend's house. They are boys in both locations. Wow. Turf. Many seemingly refuse to fully embrace adulthood. I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. Ask a nip. Women out here be looking for dudes with the nunchucks. Eight Mac, recession is the death of third wave feminism. Well, I got a homegirl who lives with her mom, four siblings, and two kids. Three generations on the one roof. You're going to see a, a vast increase in that. Anthony Bowden, thank God my, both my parents willed me their home when they passed away and the neighborhood is slowly being gentrified. Don't sell, man. <laughs> Juwan Johnson living on my own for 2022, 20, 26, now trying to get back on my own. Yeah, that, that eight cents, that was crazy. Mar Frank, hey. Because uh, one of the things I see at the current thing is there's a lot of bum sickles. There's a lot of chicks out there who have jobs but don't have careers. So this is a, a, a problematic. All right, Anthony, don't sell. Because one of the things is if you live in a neighborhood that's gentrifying, take some money out the house, fix it up, and rent that bad boy. Because if your house is paid off, you could go to the bank and say, I need 25 for rehab loan, rehab it, jack up the rent, put some renters in there and make that asset work for you. Stay in the man. Go back and watch this stream from the beginning. Steve James and half these women just want to come home from work. Take off their bra and walk around in their t-shirt and panties. Life have tamed many of these wildebeests. I know, Victor. I know. Mar Frank, I moved at age 20 years old. Memories and long nights. All I got to say, use your imagination. unseen future uh, if you're a guy with something going on you can't go with every woman also if you're really grinding you can't entertain too many curve them up as soon as the problems start to pop up well once again if you are a man that has his economics together has no debt and lives on his own it could be a challenge for you to find a woman that you can build with. It really could be. Because this is where I'm at right now because I switched dating sites and I was just like, good Lord. You know, they're cute and everything, but they, they don't really do nothing. I was having this conversation with a friend of mine a few years ago. He's a doctor and he had the same problem. He's like, you know, I meet all these women but they don't do nothing, man. They don't have nothing going on. They don't have a career going on. They don't have an economics going on. And see, to someone who is going out and killing dragons, that shit's going to get old. You just at home looking pretty in your bra and T-shirt, just walking around the house butt naked. That ain't fun. 
<clears throat> Zola. Oh, I'll do that on the other channel. If you know this, I don't talk about that stuff on this channel too much. <clears throat> Tim A. Yep, single, no debt, very little out there. Because uh, one of the things I, I kept seeing was a lot of these chicks are busted. Um, they don't have nothing going on. They don't have a good job. They don't have a career. And then the ones who do have it going on, they never stay home. They always out doing something. So it, it's real interesting. Most of these chicks are just hopping job to job pretty much. Louis the seller. You can't believe that, man. He lies every time. You know how you can tell with Donald Trump's lying? He's talking. So, once again, to my millennials out there, you guys have got to start a business. And to help you guys out... We got Hustler Kung Fu Life Skills. Now, under the video, you can get life skills. You can get all of the courses. And it's like a car note. You get to drive the car while you're still paying for it. So you get all these courses. And it's $199 for H undergrad basic and $400 a month for the enhanced version where you get some live training. But this is under the video. Go ahead and get this because you guys are going to have to start building businesses in the future to raise your income to be able to get yourself some cash producing assets because this is the goal. First thing is, uh, and I made the money management course part of the new H undergrad. You got to learn how to manage your money. This is imperative. You got to learn how to manage your money. You got to get your five checking accounts on the personal side set up. Manage your money to the point that you have surplus. Then go out and start making more money. And then you get to the level where you have money to invest in assets. That's how the game is played. You, we're not talking that because I see a lot of these kids out here who are working real hard to get a Lambo and all this other stuff, but they don't have no real investments. They don't have nothing that kicks them money off every month. So first of all, start your business, get it to a high economic level, then where you can live well and have money to invest. That's the ploy. So all of the information is below. Give me a 24 hours to add you to the course. And we're going to get off into some other stuff later on. Yeah, I met this woman one time. She picked me up, lit a cigarette in front of her two-year-old daughter, got mad at me. I was like, pull over, and I left. Dude, you're a bubble-jumping maximizer and a humble shifter. Quinn Jackson, that's true. My ex was just a pretty face with no ambition. Man, that gets old. Be real, it's extremely hard to find a woman who's anything more than a pretty face. It's so hard that when I see a pretty face, I immediately start to think she's boring. <laughs> Byron Hill, China is the center of a global supply chain for a bunch of products, including vaccines. Their government pays to train factory workers. Trunks out here selling a a dreams to, to a bunch of people. Pretty much. Wholeheartedly concur the selection of prime cuts is minuscule, a task that rivals saving the planet.
turf, these dorks are driving their bed back, living in, yet living in an apartment complex. That is crazy. I wouldn't even want to be in my X5 living in an apartment complex. Johnny Walton, I have a brother who's 53. And my mother's 80. All of them stay with her and none of them will work. My mother goes, get a check. Yeah, you're going to see more of that. You're going to see a lot more of that. All right, people. So go below. Sign up for Hustlers Undergrad. And I will see you guys later. Because I got to go work on my Facebook ads. It's a... Uh, it's very interesting because I got I got to see what's going to get approved and stuff. And I got to make more and I got to put out more stuff. So you're going to see me do the things that I tell you you should be doing. Unlike other people who train folks on the Internet. So with that, I'll see you.